This is a photo of my Case International 235 uh, just after I purchased it in the summer of 2005. The tractor has a three-cylinder Mitsubishi diesel engine. Uh, it came with a wood 60-inch mower deck. It has a three-point hitch and a PTO with 18 horsepower. The one thing that the tractor lacked was a, a loader. They're searching I, the local dealerships and the internet. Uh, they just didn't make a loader for this machine. So after about a month of design, about three and a half months of fabrication, uh, this is what I ended up with. And it works quite well. A few of the design requirements that I had was, first and foremost, it had to be extremely strong because I knew it was going to get used. All of the steel is a minimum one quarter inch thickness. Uh, some areas have half inch thickness and other areas are one inch thick. Another item that I knew that I wanted was that it had to be able to be removed from the tractor easily. With this design uh, it takes me no more than three minutes to install some support legs, disconnect hoses, pull two pins and I simply back away from the loader as uh, you can see in the photograph. Another item that I knew that I wanted is to have a hydraulic float. This allows the bucket to follow the contour of the ground without any intervention from the operator. I've had uh, tractors in the past with and without float and to build it without that option was not acceptable. This is a photograph of the main subframe of the loader. All the pieces are just tacked together at the moment in this, in this photograph. You'll see two uh, sub towers on either side of the frame. Of course the main uh, plates that bolt up to the tractor itself and the uh, plates with the holes through them are for the bell crank for the uh, mower deck. Uh, and This is used to uh, raise or lower the deck through the three-point hitch. This next series of photographs shows one of the many fit-ups that I went through during construction. You see the uh, sub-tower on the right side of the tractor and of course here is the left side of the tractor and you'll see the bell crank uh, in the lower portion of the photograph. In this last photo uh, you'll see the bell crank is installed and the tie rod going back uh, to the three-point hitch as well. I was able to use the original Woods bell crank mechanism. I just had to make a few minor modifications. These uh, next uh, photographs show the upper towers in place on the lower frame. You'll see a uh, bar between the two towers. Uh, this is used to keep everything aligned for welding. And this photograph shows how I secure the two uh, sections together. It's a one inch solid steel pin. And lastly, here's the upper tower removed so you can see the pin on the uh, sub tower. I had heard horror stories about tractors that got split in two when they didn't use supports between the loader and the tractor frame. So I installed two one inch bars between the loader subframe and the rear axle of the tractor. This photo shows the brace that I installed that runs between the lower towers and the front of the tractor and it serves to take all the load that is imposed on the uh, structure when anything is lifted by the bucket. This photograph shows the completed frame uh, which includes the subframe, the two towers, uh, the brace that runs to the back, the back of the axle, uh, there's a brace that runs between the towers and the front of the tractor, and the bell crank for the mower deck. At this point, uh, everything's been welded and uh, basically it's ready to be primed and painted. Here we see the bracket that supports the loader valve uh, has been welded. And also, it's a good view of the lower tower and upper tower as well as the pins. Here you see that I've got a good start on the booms that will uh, connect the towers to the bucket. 
uh, the lift cylinders are in place. These uh, reinforcement plates have been uh, welded and basically it's starting to take shape. Here you see the, the bucket is welded together. I had the uh, shell for the bucket uh, formed at a local metal shop, uh, but I did cut the end plates as well as the center rib during uh, fabrication. The leading edge of the bucket is made out of uh, quarter inch uh, hardened steel and I added a one inch uh, bar across the top uh, as well as chain hooks. Uh, they come in real handy. With the mechanical portion of the loader pretty well wrapped up, I turned to the hydraulics. Here you see I've used the steel uh, brake line and formed it so I can connect the supply line hoses uh, to the individual cylinders. I decided to go with the pipe just because it looks better and I can tuck it in so it keeps it out of harm's way. Uh, all in all I was very pleased uh, how this turned out. This was the maiden voyage outside. I wanted to see at this point if I had any serious design problems. As you can see the tilt cylinders for the bucket uh, have not been installed but it was a good point to try things and just to get a warm fuzzy feeling uh, of the overall concept. As you can see the tilt cylinders are installed and I've also mounted the uh, quick disconnects between the uh, solid lines and the su supply hydraulic line from the loader. The quick disconnects will allow me to uh, separate the lines without any fluid loss uh, when I want to remove the loader from the tractor. Here we have the finished uh, loader. The following pictures are just a series of views from different angles uh, so you can get a perspective of what I've done. Okay. <laughs> Getting towards the end of my little presentation here, uh, but I thought I'd include several photographs showing the loader removed from the tractor. I can't overemphasize how important it was to me to come up with a way to easily remove this thing from the tractor whenever I wanted. I've had tractors before where the loader could not be removed and trying to do work on the engine or anything else becomes a real problem. So after looking at John Deere's and Kubota's and Case International's, uh, it seemed like the Kubota's had a pretty nice setup as far as how the loader mounted to the tractor. Uh, so basically this is a copy of their design. Again, I simply installed the legs up front and pull two pins, uh, disconnect four hoses and uh, I simply back away from the loader. It takes me no more than three minutes for the entire process. It is a tight fit and I have to be careful when I back out of the loader and then pull into the loader. I had a, a tough time with the design because of the way the muffler is situated on this this engine that was probably my biggest challenge uh, throughout the tire process. This is a real good shot uh, showing the loader uh, disconnected uh, from the tractor itself. Of course the hoses are disconnected and the pins are removed and the tractor has just been backed away a couple inches to, to let you see the relationship between uh, the components. I've included uh, four photos showing how I can have both the loader and mower deck installed. 
and then a photo showing the the loader removed from the tractor yet the mower deck is still installed and finally a view showing the how I tuck the hoses uh, away back in the one tower it's a nice setup and it, it seems to work quite well